Wrestling. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Grind City Wrestling. I am Dustin Starr, and I'm coming to you for the final time in 2023. And what a year it's been. So why not end the year with one of the biggest interviews yet? He's on his way to Memphis, Tennessee, fresh off of his debut at Game Changer Wrestling. He's from the WWE. His name is Top Dollar. But before we get there, I want to tell you to follow us on social media. At Grind City Media. Take that subscribe button to Slap City wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. And also, you can check out the archives. Every episode in full, absolutely free, at grindcitymedia.com slash podcast. Let's not waste any time. Today, my special interview is with Top Dollar, not Nada. Check it out. Dustin Starr here going one-on-one -on -one interview style, only interview style, <laughs> and only AJ Francis, a.k.a. Top Dollar. What's up, man? How you doing, brothers? Thank you for having me. Man, thanks for coming on here, talking a little bit of uh, Memphis wrestling, but you're, you're obviously coming to Memphis on January the 7th. That's an upcoming Sunday. Tickets are on sale right now. MemphisWrestling.tv. You and I have had an agreement for quite a while, but we couldn't say anything because of the no compete clause. I want to ask you about all that kind of stuff, but but first, I got to talk a little bit of sports because I've mm -hmm. been looking through Twitter, and even before we had this agreement for you to come work in Memphis Wrestling, you seem to be a Grizzlies fan. Is there a connection to Memphis that I don't know about? Uh, you know, I just support Ja. You know what I'm saying? Ja is the future of this league. I wouldn't say that I'm a Grizzlies fan. I'm not really a fan of any one particular team in the NBA. I like players. Um, but I've been, you know, a big s supporter of the Grizzlies ever since, you know, Zach Randolph, you know, going back to, you know, my boy Grievous Vasquez, who I, who I went to college with in Maryland. He played for the Grizzlies too, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've, I've, I've had love for the Grizzlies for a long time. But uh, currently, it's Ja, man. It's the it's the John ja Morant show. As of now, he's undefeated on his comeback tour, man. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Paul so, 12. I'm good. glad that you dropped uh, Zebo's name. We've been doing Grind City Wrestling Nights at the Memphis Grizzlies for many years. And I always said that if I had to pick a tag team partner from the Memphis Grizzlies to go into any sort of, you know, combat situation, it's my boy Zebo, my favorite player of all time. Feed the hand, baby. Yeah, it's either Zebo or Paul. On um, our mark, you know what I'm saying? One of the two, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Well, and, and talking a little bit more about some other sports is I am – I can't even think of another Miami Dolphins fan other than my buddy Danny, who I grew up since I was five years old. And we have, like, been through it all with the Miami Dolphins. And I was sitting here on Christmas watching my Miami Dolphins play against the Dallas Cowboys in a room full of Cowboys fans. And it was great to see the Dolphins win. There's some sort of connection because when I'm going through your Twitter, I see a bunch of Dolphins tweets. Yeah, I played the uh, first team I ever played on in the NFL was the Dolphins. Um, I spent three years in Miami, uh, made a lot of really good friends and a lot of really great connections. That's why I spend so much time uh, in South Florida, even though I live in Central Florida, I mean, even for the uh, the show uh, at Memphis Wrestling on the seventh, the night before, I'll be in Miami on the sixth doing a show. So, like, I got a lot of connections down there still in Miami. Um, you know, I, I loved my time on the Dolphins. We didn't win anything. You know, we never made the playoffs. But I you know. went from a I went from a broke kid in Maryland to having money living in Miami. So, you know, you know, it's goods and bads. Yeah, I grew up uh, watching Dan Marino. He was my favorite football player of all time, you know. Funny story and about Dan is, uh, you know, Dan, I don't know if he's still as involved as he was back then. But when I um, was in the Dolphins, Dan had just got back into the fold as, like, part of the front office. And he was, like, always walking around practice and the, and the training facility. And I always thought it was crazy. Dan Marino was there every day. It was just like – Getting to see Dan, man. Like, and the crazy part is, most people know Dan from. This, this is sad. I found this out over the years. Most people know Dan Marino from Ace Ventura. Like, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> it's crazy to me. It's crazy. Like, if you're not a football fan, if you didn't grow up watching football, like a lot of people know Dan Marino from Ace Ventura, which is, I found that out over the years, and it's absolutely insane to me. Yeah, totally mind-blowing, especially being one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. But in all fairness, yeah. they were comments. 
they wear helmets, so you don't really get to see them that much. Not now is a different game, but you know, back in the nineties. Yeah, before social media and all that. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Sure. But that was back when the guys could go drinking before the game and after the game and whatever they wanted to do. You know, so you could. But there were some perks before social media too. Yeah, absolutely. Catching up with AJ Francis, aka Top Dollar. Are we calling you Dollar now? Is that what we're going by? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can call me Dollar, but, you know, a lot of people call me Dollar, but, you know, I like going by my name. If you Google AJ Francis, some really cool shit comes up. So, you know, I try to make sure that, uh, you know, you put that out there because my name is my name and my name is is attached to many successful things from the NFL to WWE to, you know, ESPN, NBC, CBS, Fox, NFL Network, the A&E, the list goes on and on, you know, so um, a lot of people... I finally reached, and I'm also like I feel like um Bailey said something about like she loved who the care like she loved being the hugger character, but she liked you know um she liked the fact that like when she changed her character, it was like a reflection of her growing as an adult, and like all these years I've had different names um in wrestling and stuff, and I feel like I'm at the point now where like my name is the name that matters. You know, I've grown into the fact that my name is what matters. So that's what I go by. Let's talk about that. So you, you mentioned a lot of really cool shit. AJ Francis was released by WWE. You had to wait it out for your no compete. So once the no compete was up, oh, my gosh, I saw you at Game Changer Wrestling, made the big announcement that you're coming to Memphis Wrestling. Also, what's going on with Cheez-Its, man? This is super <laughs> cool. Sidelines, the Cheez-Its, what is this? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, like I said, I was on TV for 10 years before I got to WWE, man. I have a lot of connections. So um, somebody reached out to me. One of my good friends reached out to me who I've worked with in the past. He was like, look, what are you doing January 1st? And I was like, uh, currently nothing. Um, he's like, man, um, I got this spot. Cheese its they, they need somebody to give the MVP title to the MVP of the game. He's like, they wanted to be a wrestler. He's like, and I thought of you. And I was like, hey, man, let's do it. And the funny thing is, is like, if I was still in WWE, I wouldn't even be able to do it because WWE right. only, lets, only lets people do, like, you know, the titles that they design and stuff like that. So, like, and that's what I always thought was hilarious is that, like, all these NFL collabs that they're doing now, they never once asked me to do an NFL collab, and I was the only person good enough to actually play in the NFL. So it was just always right. funny to me that they did that, but – uh, you know, uh, it's this opportunity was cool, man. And uh, Jesus has been really cool. Um, the Citrus Bowl is is one of the most watched bowl games of the year every year. And this year it's Iowa and Tennessee, two top ranked teams. So it'll be a good time. Man, how cool is this? When people think that when you get released from WWE or you part ways or whatever, that they think that the game is over. And really, a lot of times it's when the game just begins, like you said, yeah. growing as a former. AJ Francis, you have a lot of accolades outside of WWE that these wrestling fans don't know anything about. And then immediately, not only are you all over Pepper and social media with all this stuff, you're going to be working on the sidelines of the Citrus Bowl? Like, yeah. what a way to bounce back, brother. Congratulations on that. Thank you, brother. And it's just the fact that, like, I got a point to prove. Um, I know that I'm a star in this business. I know because everything that I do, people care about. I can say something innocuous and it'll trend for three days. Um, you know, like for some reason, the people gravitate to what I say. Um, people have this propensity to believe that like, if you didn't get an opportunity in WWE, it's something you did, man, I can promo with anybody on earth. And if anybody thinks that th they can out promo me, just diss me. <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see who the better promo is. Right. So it's like, I I have a very good ability on the microphone, and I never got to show it in WWE. That's why when I got the GCW, first thing I did was promo back, and everybody was like, "Wow, where was this in WWE?" I'm like in catering, bro. Right, <laughs> exactly. They didn't give the opportunity. Well, I can't wait to interview you at the desk, live at the Wrestle Center, thirty two ninety six Winbrook Drive. Get your tickets, MemphisWrestling.tv. It's Sunday, January seventh. AJ Francis, Top Dollar is going to be there. Cash Flow from Wrestlers on Netflix is going to be there as well. He's another big dude. I don't know if you've ever squared off against him, but we might see get everybody. Play. Everybody's big until the big guy walks in the room. I've heard it before. These guys are wrestling big, man. 
six five, three thirty, no fluff, no wrestling fluff, no six five. He's actually oh, he's six eight. He's actually six five. No, oh, he's six five. He's actually six two. No, real life six five, three thirty. NFL D lineman showing up. We're gonna see who's really big. There's definitely something to it, like you just said. There's definitely something to it because when we made the announcement that you were coming, our Facebook went absolutely nuts. And the people didn't necessarily have the best things to say about it. You know how wrestling fans are. They pepper you with all sorts of different things. So, mm-hmm. But that, me as a promoter and as a as Memphis Wrestling, that tells me that there's something there and they can't wait to boo you out of the building. Uh-huh. And that's all I want. They're allowed to feel however way they want. If they really feel that way, they'll be able to see me after the show in the parking lot. Something tells me that they won't uh-huh. want to do that. They'll want to see me during the show from behind the guardrail. Now, I've got to ask you a question before I let you go, wrapping things up here with AJ Francis. Okay, now I'm going to mention this because the wrestling fans would kill me if I didn't. Of course, everybody wants to talk about the dive. And Mm -hmm. I was watching live on the dive. It kind of reminded me of my buddy Titus O'Neil when he slid under the ring at the WrestleMania or whatever. Stuff happens. But there's a story here that I read that you put out um, that I wanted to ask you about. You could tell it right here. There's a lot more to the story as far as that dive where you missed the dive. Do you want to tell that, or do you just want to tell them? Uh, I mean, you know, I said it. I already told this on Twitter, but uh, you know, my my legs fell off that day. But I'm a world class athlete, man. Like, if you go back and watch other clips of me in the, of WWE, when I do my jumping elbow drop, my feet will be at the referee's head. You know what I'm saying? Like, my feet will be above the top rope from a straight vertical leap. Um, I'm a hell of an athlete, man. I have been. That's why I played six years in the NFL. Um, but like when I uh I started losing weight and I was trying to lose weight, um, but I didn't know it was because I was diabetic. I didn't know that I was losing so much weight because I had changed my diet, I had changed how I worked out, I was actively trying to lose weight, so I didn't realize that what I what was actually happening was type two diabetes was kicking my ass and it was going untreated. So my legs felt a little off, um, which I, you know, I should have just, I should have recognized that. But I mean, at the time it could be nerves. It could be anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, And then after the dive, I felt like, man, something's not right. Cause I've done that dive dozen times before all over in different promotions all over the world. Um, and like, if you watch the clip, I don't even get off the ground when I try to jump. Like I don't even, as someone who's always been a great leaper, um, I, I didn't even get off the ground. So like, I started wondering like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I started taking like, uh, more supplements and vitamins and stuff, trying to like, maybe I'm deficient somewhere. Um, and it wasn't until I was like trying to put weight back on finally. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm weak and I can't jump because I lost all my leg muscle. Maybe I'm just not as strong anymore because I'm I'm lighter. So I actually wanted to get TRT um, and get on uh, testosterone replacement to try to uh, bulk back up. I was like, man, that'll help me get my weight back up. And then, uh, you know, when I got my blood work to get TRT, uh, the doctor calls me and is like, yo, uh, are you with someone? I'm like, what do you mean? He said, yo, come to my office right now. Is some Can someone drive you? I'm like, drive me? Like, what the hell is going on? Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, because I was, my blood sugar was so high that at any, because anywhere between, anywhere over 300 in your blood sugar, you're at risk for a diabetic coma, right? So like, um, you know, some people go as high as eight, 900 before they pass out. You know what I'm saying? It depends on how your body handles it. So mine was in at like 626. So like um the doctor was like, yo, come, I need someone to drive you to my office right now. Cause he was afraid I was gonna like go in a coma while I was driving, which would be worse, obviously. Oh yeah. Um, so um, you know, I get there, he immediately puts me on some meds, puts me on IV, does a bunch of different things, and then uh gives me medication. He's like, All right, well, you gotta take these pills uh with Breakfast and with the dinner every day forever. I was like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, and, you know, ever since that day, like, I was 370 when I re-signed with WWE a little bit over a year ago. Um, I was 260 when I found out 
that I had diabetes. And oh. since then, I've bulked back up to like 330. But I look much better. I'm looking like a really good 330. And that's all thanks to the fact that I went and, uh, you know, finally got my blood tested, figured out what was wrong. And a lot of people were like, oh, man, are you are you, you sad you got diabetes? Like, that's a life-changing thing. And to me, it was not sad that I got diabetes. It was, all right, I was grateful I found out what the fuck was going on, like what, right. what the problem was. You know what right. I'm saying? Because there was a, clearly a problem. And now that there's a solution, I'm like, okay. I can make the most out of this. And ever since then, I've been much better. I'm much healthier. Back, got my strength back, got my jumping back, got everything back. So it's just proper medication, man. Stay yep. your life. Well, th thank you for that, man. I'm glad that you guys found that out. Wrestling world is just uh, sometimes extremely harsh, but they don't realize that there are stories and uh, there's reasons for everything. And then we're human as well. So, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's the funniest thing about that whole thing to me is that, like, People use that as a reason as to why I'm like not an athlete. And I'm like, bro, you did you start on JV? Like, come on, man. Like, did you did you did you play one game on your varsity football team? Like, come on, man. Like, come on, man. Don't uh, try to tell me I'm chance. not an athlete. <laughs> they'll have a chance to see you full force in action coming up yeah. in Memphis. The at the Wrestle Center, Sunday, January 7th. It's our first television taping of 2024 you can get your tickets right now at memphiswrestling.tv any last words for any memphians that's watching that are thinking 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 about going to the show you know um we're gonna go to memphis wrestling and then you know i'm excited for that i'm excited to wrestle in memphis i've always i've wrestled in memphis before on smackdown i did a lot of work with uh, lawler in memphis uh for the most wanted treasure show i spent a lot of time on bill, bill street because of that so yeah. uh yeah you know uh hey now <laughs> All right, well, AJ Francis, a.k.a. Top Dollar, thank you for, so much for joining me here on Grind City Wrestling. We'll see you in 2024. Our first live TV taping of 2024 is Sunday, January 7th, featuring former WWE superstar AJ Francis, a.k.a. Top Dollar, and OVW wrestlers on Netflix star Cash Flow. Meet them both at our VIP experience and catch them live. Reserve your seat today at MemphisWrestling.tv.